Well, wow, you threw that one on me, Mark, as we're coming through the door. You've been here eight years, but soon to be no longer. Well, it's a little, little bit dramatic. I'm still going to remain as a director of Portsmouth Football Club and in, in my thinking of accepting the opportunity at Tops, it was a key part that I could stay involved with Portsmouth Football Club. As you know, I've developed some great friends, relationships here with people, you know, great people. We went through a lot through the administration, yourself included. And, um, you know, I, I still have got a love with football, but I felt the time was right to look for a new challenge. And obviously, Michael, graciously, as part of me going, was that I could stay on as a director of Portsmouth Football Club, which I, I think is, is great for all parties concerned. You're probably one, I think you are one, the longest serving chief executive. You'll have a lot of memories. Yeah, you make me feel old there, <laughs> I've got to be honest. And I do think that's probably part of the reason um, in me taking the decision to, to move on in that I do think you can be at a club or a business or, or anything these days for a period of time and the the business, the football club, the entity needs a freshen up. And I think the people involved need a freshen up as well. And, you know, I've, I've said this week that I, th I feel that we've got some great people in the club. Now we've got Danny as head coach and Nikki as assistant head coach. Fantastic, vibrant, youngish managers, a uh, lot of fresh ideas. We've got Greg Miller, who's come in um, as head of a academy. Again, you know, very, very similar to Danny and Nikki in regards of their views, their opinions, but what they've got about them is vibrancy and enthusiasm. We've got the chance now to rebuild the team, um, a new CEO that's coming in who's absolutely fantastic. So again, another great addition. Aligned with Tony Brown, Anna Mitchell, yourself, and the rest of you know the backroom staff who are absolutely fantastic. And it, it is a great time. It's a new era. I've referred to that. And and. Obviously, with myself, I, th I feel that it's the right time for me personally and the club that I do make a decision, take that decision and move on. And, you know, luckily for me, um, Michael s sp spoke to me over the last few weeks about an, an opportunity at Tots, which is a, is a fantastic company, something that I'm really, I can stay within a sporting environment with the role that I've got, uh, get the chance to, to go develop new um, relationships around the world and, and can't wait to get started on that now. You can't say too much about your successor because he's, he's at another club at this moment in time, but yep. what do you feel he will bring? Will he just continue what you've already done? I think a key part of anyone coming in here um, at Portsmouth Football Club is the relationship with the fans generally. Someone that's not afraid to be out there, someone that's not afraid on a match day, win, lose or draw, to walk around the stadium and, and pre-COVID shake people's hands, um, you know, do continue to engage as hopefully I have done, I'm sure he will, but also someone that's got a fit with the dynamic of, of Danny and Nikki, of, of your Tony, your Anna, your Greg, you know, someone that, that can be a calming influence, I would hope, just keep things moving along in the right direction. Someone that gets on with our board of directors and i just got to say our board of directors are absolutely fantastic. They'll, they'll support whoever does, the, the person that's coming in and um, I'm sure he's, he or she is as excited as I am about their appointment and hopefully you won't have to wait too long for that to be announced. But do you think it's a forward appointment that's going to uh, keep uh, the progress uh, going? Ex ex exactly that. It's someone that's loyal. It's a forward appointment. has got a lot of the experiences that we now need to take this club, hopefully, to the next level. And as I say, I'm going to be there in, in the background for any help and assistance. We've got some fantastic projects going on behind the scenes that I mentioned a month or so ago. It would have been nice to have got those over the line before obviously my resigning, but it's just one of those things. It's not about me, it's about the football club. We have to make the right decisions and not rush them just because I'm leaving and they will come out in, in, the, in the very near future. And I'm, I'm very proud to have been part of what we are gonna be announcing um, soon. Would have been nice to go out on a promotion, nevertheless. It would have been really the fairy tale ending um, to take the club from, you know, along with the team from going out of existence. You know, that first year really struggling to even stay in the league, to, to, to go out with us making the championship, still being debt free, going through the COVID period with no redundancies, everyone getting paid. Um, yeah, so on and off the pitch and with the projects that we have got coming up, which, which, as I say again, are very exciting. It would have been 
naturally a great fairy tale ending for me here, but you know, unfortunately, it, it's, it wasn't to be. But you take with you an awful lot of memories. I've got a huge amount of memories, um, mainly centered around supporters and my you know, relationship with them, the way they've supported me through thick and thin and even over the last month or two, which, is, which has been probably as low as it's been for me at the club to, to keep getting messages of support. Um, that has meant so much to me, but I do feel it is the right time, as I say, for the club and myself to move on. It was probably a year ago I, was, I spoke to Michael and, and started looking to the future, to a new challenge. Um, but at that time, with the, I was you know, in the thick of it with a salary cap. Um, COVID was, was really just in the early days of, of COVID and, and the, it was key for me to stay, work with the staff, keep the staff going, keep the club going in the right direction, maintain um, the fiscal stability that, that we are renowned for. And that's, gonna, that's been difficult this year without supporters. There's not a lot we can do, but we have tried to keep ploughing through that and keep following um, sound fiscal values. Um, but I did, yeah, I, did, I, I thought to leave at the end of last season on the back of the, the impending COVID, which was just the start of the COVID pandemic and no one knew what the new season held, would have been you know, quitting and, and that's not my style. So I decided to stay for the rest of this season. And, and to a degree, I think that's, that's been something with no fans either as probably had an effect as well in regards that I love coming to match days with a full stadium, having the banter, you know, mixing with supporters and a year of, of not having that, I think you, it does grind you down actually, which is, I know supporters can say, oh, well, you're in a privileged position that you've been able to keep going to games where they haven't, but it's been, you know, it's like you've been Johnny, it's soulless, it's like watching a training game. And it's just been where I look forward to a Saturday and and the excitement, as I say, turning up, walking around the stadium. When you walk out in, into where I sit and seeing the fans, that, that, that's the adrenaline rush that I personally have lived for. It's, it's the biggest part of the week. It's, it's all my work is geared towards that experience for me personally. Um, and, and not having that this last year probably has, has really reinforced my opinion that the, it was the right time to go. That's the match day. In the day-to-day -day job, what will you miss? What won't you miss? You. <laughs> <laughs> Your banter. You know, I am a, what I'd call a social person. I, I like having people around. You know what I'm like in the office. Um, just love working, interacting with people, building teams. And we've got an, an enormous amount of loyal, dedicated, really, really top-level staff, not just professionally, but personally as well, Great people at this club. That's, that's probably the, one of the things I'm going to miss, you know, you, you guys and my interaction with you and, and the, the, the comradeship that, that we do have here. I'll tell you what I won't miss. I won't miss your awful jokes. <laughs> yeah, it does make you laugh that they're so awful. You actually end up laughing at them. I got that from your dad, actually. He was as bad as me. <laughs> The rest of it, we will miss you, Martin. We wish you all the very best, although you'll still be in the area. You'll still be a director, so yeah. it, it, not a lot changing. All right, lovely. Thank you, Johnny. Thank Cheers. You.